Hi everyone, welcome back for another tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how to first set up your Photoshop. So I'm just going to open Photoshop now. And here we are. So this is what Photoshop looks like when you open the first time. So I'm just going to select one of my recent files. So it's not blank. So the first thing I like to do is uh, I like to edit my workspace. So for instance, I don't use much the color palette so I'll get rid of it or the swatches palette as well so there you go so uh, I don't need the 3d here so I'll get rid of it uh, and device preview I can get rid of it as well and probably the history uh, yeah I'll get rid of it cool so this is my workspace also I can come here and I can actually edit my own workspace my my tools but i want to uh my tools as they are so i'm happy with the overall uh workspace so i'm going to just click right here and i'm going new workspace and i'm going to call this miguel campus if i have some keyboard shortcuts or menus or toolbars just for this workshop, uh, for this workspace, I can actually use it. So I'll just tick here. But in my case, it's not very simple. So I'll click save. Obviously, you can save as many workspaces that you as you like. So cool. So that's the first step. Next step is I'm going to edit or Photoshop menu if you're on a Mac. And I'm going to my preferences. And I'm going to start with general. The general here, as, as you saw, we had like a big window showing up with a new workspace so I don't lo like that and obviously it takes longer to load as well so I'm going just to untick the show start workspace and show recent files workspace when opening a file so I'll untick that I rather use the normal new document window so I'll just tick use legacy new document interface and in this area here I'm quite pleased, but that's my opinion, and this is my workflow. It may not work for you, but I'm just going through a couple of things that I normally tend to do. So now I've, I've got interface. We can go and pick different colors. I actually like dark color, and all of the rest, I'll leave it as it is. So nothing too fancy here either. Under the workspace, uh, auto collapse or iconic panels or to show hidden layers I'll leave this as as it is now we have tools one of the features I like even though I use my Wacom tablet all the time sometimes just for a bit of fun I use my mouse as well and uh, I like to zoom with the scroll wheel of the mouse so right here we have an option for that so zoom with scroll wheels there you go so that's cool uh, Another option is over scroll and I'm going to show you exactly what that does. So I'll click OK for now and I've got my move tool and I've got my background layer and I only can move the my, my image when I'm zoomed in to a certain point. Right here now I can't do nothing. As you can see I'm holding my spacebar so I have my hand tool and I'm clicking and nothing happens. So I'm going to file, preferences, tools and I'm going to tick over scroll and I'm going to click OK. What that does is I actually can just move it around like so which is an awesome feature so if I have a panel open on the side so I can be working in the panel and still have the image as I want instead of having to be zoomed in so that's a nice feature here. So let me just bring that to normal so I'm going back to my preferences so we were under tools so all of the other things i don't use them to be honest uh, apart from the ones that are ticked already so history log uh, this is just in case if you want to record anything into you may do something to your image and this way if you click history log text file and uh, basically photoshop will write everything that you do into an image uh, I don't need that. Sometimes I do use, but not very often. File handling. Uh, I like everything as it is, so I wouldn't touch anything at all. And now we have the export. I'll leave it as it is as well. And the performance. I like to bring my 
my performance to 80% just because I'm using 8 gig RAM computer and I want to make the most of the RAM I've got while using uh, Photoshop. Also scratch disks. Uh, in my case, I still didn't connect my second hard drive, so I'm going to leave it as it is for now. And now you have the cursor here. So you've got uh, for the brushes just normal pen, normal brush tip or full size. I like to leave it as it is. And also the brush preview as well that you can change the color of. And I'll leave it as it is. Transparency in gamut. I like the grid colors to be dark. So as you can see, I just changed it. And you've got the size that you may like the grid. I prefer to have it medium. So that's another one. Uh, right here, the units in rulers. I like to have it in pixels. And I'll leave it as it is. Guys, grids. I like, I'll leave everything as it is as well. Plugins, type, and 3D, and all of the rest I like as it is. So cool. So I'm pretty much set up. So now the only problem is uh, one of my favorite actions is when I post anything online, I don't send full resolution image. In this case here, this image is with a, it was taken with a D800, so we're talking about 36 megapixels. So I want, normally I tend to resize it. Uh, and I have an, an action for that. So under the window, you go to actions and it opens the actions. Uh, like so, these are the default ones. But I've got one that does exactly what I want. So I'm just going to click right here and I'm going to load actions. And I'm going to my desktop because I've put it there. And I've got web. Load. And there you go. I've got it here. And under here, it's very simple. It's a Shift F2 uh, shortcut key. So I'm going to Shift F2 and just resizes the image as I want to. So I'm going to undo that. So, so I'm covered in there. So also, let's say I have some brushes. So what I can do is I select my brush and uh, Right here, oh, sorry, let me just close that. Right here where this arrow pointing down, I've got this like gear sort of thing. I'll click and I'm going to load brushes. And on my desktop, I've got my brushes that I can load like so. And as you can see, I've got a different brush as well. Um, also, let's say I have some shapes that I want to bring back to Photoshop that I created in another version or in my case, I actually had to do a factory set on my machine, so everything was backed up, which is great, but I can then always bring them back. I don't need to just go and uh, redo them again. So for that, I'll just, under the rectangular tool, I'm going to select Custom Shape Tool, and I'm going to click the arrow pointing down. So I'm going to click right here where that gear thingy is, and I'm going to load shapes. And once again, desktop, custom shapes, load, and now I've got my own shape as well. So, as you can see, it looks uh, super easy, and uh, Photoshop now it's the way I like it. Obviously, this all of this may not work for you, but when sometimes you open Photoshop, you don't know, okay, then what are the best settings? I'm not saying that. These may be your best settings for you, but they are for me. They work really well. Obviously, I can tweak anything that I may like, uh, depending on what I'm working on. But I hope this helps you anyway. Uh, feel free to share this video with your friends and the family and everyone else. And please do subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.